This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. SSPTV is expanding our reach. Our new mobile app is available for download today. Good evening and thank you for joining us at SSPTV News on this Monday. I'm Lisa Sugart sitting in tonight for Ken Cara. Thank you for watching SSPTV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. We begin tonight with headlines from SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Two men are wanted by Hazelton police in connection with an alleged kidnapping. The two being sought are 35-year-old Carlos Castillo and 21-year-old Martin Lara Le Casado, both from Hazelton. Yesterday afternoon, police were called to the 500 block of East Diamond Avenue for a report of a kidnapping. Police said the victim, whose name has not been released, was held against his will at a residence in the 400 block of East Diamond Avenue. Police searched for the two men in the early morning hours. They believe the two may have fled to Patterson, New Jersey, or Brooklyn, New York, where they have ties. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of the two men is asked to call Hazleton Police at 570-459-4940. You can go online at hazeltonpolice.com or dial 911. Flames destroyed a home in Sugarloaf Township last night. These are photos from the scene courtesy of fireandfilm.com. The call came in just after 10 p.m. last night for 105 Center Hill Road. Sugarloaf Township Fire Chief Dwayne Hildebrand told our media partner, The Standard Speaker, that the fire spread quickly and crews had to take a defensive approach when the flames went through the roof. Units from several neighboring communities all responded to that two-alarm fire along with local ambulances. The Red Cross was called in to help the two adults and four children who were displaced by the fire. Three pets also made it out safely. A state police fire marshal is investing the cause. In other news tonight, a forum on the heroin and opioid epidemic will take place in our area next week. State Representative Tara Tuhill will co-host a public discussion along with Congressman Lou Barletta and State Senator John Udichak on the heroin and opioid epi epidemic in our region and across Pennsylvania. The forum will take place next Thursday, May the 11th, from 5 to 7 p.m. at Hazelton Area High School. Panelists will include health care professionals and law enforcement officials who will speak about the extent of the drug crisis here in our communities and the efforts underway to resolve it. Representative Tuhill is encouraging everyone to attend this important event and learn how you can be part of the solution. Well, another crisis plaguing our communities is that of suicide. To increase awareness about this devastating issue, an annual walk will take place this Sunday at Hazelton Area High School. I had the chance to talk with some of the people who are instrumental in making this important event a reality. Very pleased to welcome to our studios today a great group of people here for a wonderful cause. It is the Help Stop the Silence Walk to Prevent Suicide, and it's being hosted at Hazelton Area High School by their SAD club. Samantha Neiman is the program and walk coordinator for this special event. She's also joined by members of the SAD club, and I know that I have Anthony here with me. Anthony, your full name is? Anthony Martasio. And you're going to tell us who the rest are? <laughs> uh, these are other SAD members. This is Sadie, Caitlin, and Kim. All righty. So we know that we have the crew here from the high school. Samantha, this is a really wonderful event, but it's for a very serious cause. I was looking at the information you sent me, and you said it's the second leading cause of death for our youth 10 to 24 and college students talking about suicide. That's correct. And the numbers are just continuing to climb, uh, sadly. Um, in the case of myself, um, in, in organizing this years ago, my own son had taken his life 10 years ago at the age of 13. And I kind of wish, you know, not kind of wish, I wish that, you know, some programs and whatnot, there were more awareness at the time that perhaps he would have reached out for help. And that is the goal that we're trying to achieve here is to have the, you know, community unite and show their support for people, encouraging them perhaps to reach out for help and also to show support for the loved ones who are left behind to try to decrease these numbers. 
All right, now the event I said is on May 7th and you guys are all representing the SAD Club. For anybody who doesn't know what that is, tell us what the SAD Club is and what SAD stands for. Well, SAD stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions and it's a group and we try and help promote people from doing any kind of dangerous decisions that may harm them in any kind of way. Now you're involved with this, so the walk's taking place that Sunday, so what do people need to do? do they, can they register that day? Well, how does it work? Yeah, you could show up that day and register, and registration is at 12 o'clock in the Hazleton gym. Okay, and then the program starts at 1, followed by the walk. So then um, there's also a lot of other activities that are taking place as well. Uh, Sadie Babadilla is an 11th grade student, a member of SAD. Sadie, what are all the other activities that are happening at the same time? Well, basically, we have vendors um, set up around the gym who basically they're um, either the SAD club, like what our activity is, we are filling up balloons and then having people tie on like, inspiring messages onto them. And then later in the day, we release them outside. And also we have um, vendors from other areas for like mental health institutions that help provide um, guidance and assistance for people who are struggling with these um, with this problem. Now I've seen in the past like kids get together with a group of you know fellow students and that is that what happens they get like kind of teams together or groups together to go to it yeah I mean a lot of people come in like groups with their friends for the walk and stuff and it's just it's a good time so it's a good show of support learning about this and hopefully preventing anyone else from ever thinking of suicide right yeah all right well you all would be commended for supporting this wonderful cause Samantha when they want to register they should just go to the website is that the best way if they want to register in advance Absolutely, uh, they can register in advance at uh, www.helpstopthesilence.org or can certainly uh, register the day of the event. And after the walk then on Sunday, May 7th, you're having a post picnic, I guess, a post walk picnic. Yes, following the walk, uh, we will provide everyone with, you know, pizza and something to drink and it, it gives everyone in attendance an opportunity actually to, you know, be able to unwind and spend some time together with other survivors. All right, well, we hope a large crowd will come out for this event. Again, rain or shine, Sunday, May 7th, Hazleton Area High School starting in the gymnasium. So we hope you will come out. Registration begins at noon, or you can go to their website for more information on this walk. And we don't want to forget about these two lovely young ladies behind me here. They have a message for all of you out there. Whether you're affected by this or not, it's really a worthwhile cause to come out to. Um, everyone of all ages is invited to come out. All right, very well said. Thank you all for being here. Uh, keep up the great work, Samantha. I hope that people get to learn about this so that we don't have to talk about these numbers increasing, but rather decreasing. Thank you. Elsewhere in the news tonight, the concerned citizens of Schuylkill County will sponsor a special candidates forum next Thursday night. The event is entitled Meet the Hazleton Area School District School Board Candidates 2017. It will take place Thursday, May 11th at 7 p.m. at the McAdoo Diner, 2 Kennedy Drive in McAdoo. There are seven candidates vying for four open seats on the Hazleton Area School Board. Directors Jared O'Donnell and Clarence John are not seeking re-election. Candidates who are running include incumbent school directors James Chapman and Bob Mahalik, along with former board member Dr. Robert Childs. Also on the ballot, Linda DeCosmo, a retired district teacher, and she's also the wife of former board member Mike DeCosmo. Mark Scarcella, the husband of current board member Jackie Scarcella. Ed Shemansky, who retired last year as the district's facilities manager, and Alexander Van Hoekland, a sales representative for his family's greenhouse business in Klein Township. Now you can meet these candidates next Thursday, May 11th at 7 p.m. Meanwhile, the primary election takes place on Tuesday, May 16th. Well, tonight we have an important notice from the City of Hazleton. Effective Thursday, May 4th, the Hazleton License and Permit Office on the first floor at Hazleton City Hall will now be open from 6.30 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. The purpose of the extended hours is to allow additional time for the public to gain access to receive licenses and permits. Any complaints or code questions can also be made during those hours. For more information, you can contact the City Code Enforcement Office at Hazleton City Hall. Well, today is the big day. SSPTV has expanded our reach with an exciting new mobile app. The Samsung Productions app is officially available today for Android, iPhones, Microsoft, Kindles, and Blackberries. 
Simply search SSPTV in your app store to download the new Samsung Productions app. The app makes it easy to stay connected with our social media accounts, and you can also watch all of your favorite shows from wherever you are. The new Samsung Productions app, be sure to download it today. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. You can go to facebook.com slash SSPTV News and click notifications for our latest updates. Well, still ahead, how would you like to play soccer with our very own Ken Cara? Well, we have the details. And Ron Marchetti stops by with this week's edition of Trivia Treats. This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Leanne Falabell, the Vice President of Marketing for the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce, is back with us again, this time talking about another upcoming red carpet breakfast. Thanks for coming back and joining us. Uh, so another legislative update, is that what you're having? Yes, we are, and it's coming up this Thursday, um, Thursday, May 4th, and our guest speaker is State Representative Tara Tuhill. So she will be providing a legislative update on her district. Um, she will have the opportunity for our chamber members to ask questions and answers at the end of the session. And it's a great opportunity to, for our members to meet with our state representative and get an update as to what's going on in the area and um, ask her any questions that, you, that they may have. I, from past years from seeing uh, and covering these, I know a lot of people usually turn out that you get a nice crowd. We do. We do get a nice crowd for our breakfasts. Um, usually, and especially, you know, for our local representative and our senators, our congressmen, um, you know, so far we have over 60 people signed up. Um, it's open to our chamber members and non-chamber members. Uh, for chamber members, it's $20. For non-members, it's $25. And breakfast is included. All right, so if someone watching says, I'd like to go and, you know, meet Tara Tuhill and hear what she has to say, what do they have to do? They have to register in advance. Yes, you can register online um, on our website, hazeltonchamber.org, or you can just call our office, 570-455-1509, and uh, just let us know, and um, we are more than happy to take your reservation. All righty, that is a red carpet breakfast legislative update with State Representative Tara Tuhill this Thursday. Edgewood by Sand Springs is the location uh, from 7.45 a.m. until 9 a.m. And again, please register in advance if you would like to take part. $20 for members and $25 for non-members. So we hope everyone will come out to hear what's happening in our area. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Well, we started off this week with an overcast and seasonal type of day. Let's check in with the National Weather Service now to see what's in store for the rest of our work week. For tonight, expect showers and thunderstorms. Some storms could produce small hail and gusty winds. Tonight's low around 54 degrees. Moving ahead to our four-day outlook, Tuesday there is a chance of showers early, otherwise a partly sunny day with a high of 62 degrees. Tuesday night there's a slight chance of showers again, then cloudy skies, a low dipping down to 44. Wednesday looks partly sunny, our high around 53 degrees. Partly cloudy and colder Wednesday night with a low dipping down to 40. On Thursday, the rain will return. Cloudy skies, a high of only 55 degrees, then rain at night with a low of 45. On Friday, more rain in the forecast, a high of 61 and an overnight low of 45 degrees. Well, how well, this is an interesting switch. I'm pleased to be interviewing my partner in crime. And no, it's not about Penn State. This time it's about his other favorite subject, soccer. That's right. You know, you know when you're in your car and you're the passenger and someone else is driving, it's a weird feeling? That's what I got right now. <laughs> That's about it. You do got that. You're in a dangerous chair right now. Ken Cara is here to talk about not Penn State football, although we'd like to mix that in with it, I'm sure. But this is about the Pine Street Powerball Soccer Tournament. And Kenny is the organizer of this. And this is the second year you're doing this because the first one was such a great success. First year was a great success with me not in charge. So we'll see how it goes <laughs> this year. But I think it just speaks for itself, really. We had over 15 teams last year. All of the money raised. Hazelton Power organized it. City of Hazelton helped out as well, providing the venue on Pine Street there. All of the money we raised went for the mural project. 
project in downtown Hazleton. It's almost complete, so this year we're going to raise some more funds so we could finish the mural in downtown Hazleton. So how does this tournament work and who can get involved? So it's a six week tournament. We're going to start at Sundays. It's going to start on May 21st and then we're going to take a bye week for Memorial, Memorial Day. And then after that, we'll run through July 2nd. So we're going to have two groups, an a, a division and a B division, depending upon skill level. I believe the age is 16. You brought that up before the interview, Lisa, and I, I have to find the answer to that question. I think the youngest you can be is 16 years old, but you find that information and you can also email info at hazeltonpower.org if you have any other questions, including that question how old do you have to be but I think the youngest you could be is 16 on up all right so now can I play or do you have to be an expert soccer player who is eligible to play everyone please come and play we I played in the B division last year and I haven't played since high school Lisa and you know I don't do much but eat around here and it was a lot of fun we did play some more experienced teams but it was just fun to get out there and have a good time but if you are a very experienced soccer player there's a ton of really good players in this tournament there was a former professional from Mexico who played in it um, last year and a kid who was in the Uni United States national team poll when he was younger so it, it does vary and anyone yes please Please come out. It's really just a good time to be with people in the community. Cost involved? $180 per team. Now you can have eight members on your team. Six will play at a time. Again, that will go toward the mural project in downtown Hazleton. Plus you get a t-shirt as your jersey and um, get your signups in. You could drop off the you could drop them off actually here, SSP TV 109 West Broad Street, and also at Terra Two Hills office. I think it's one West Broad Street, same street. And you could get the sign-up sheet at hazeltonpower.org slash pie. It's it's a crazy website. So we'll just put that up, but you can access it there. And we also have a Facebook page just search Pine Street Powerball. Is there a deadline so you're guaranteed to get a shirt? I haven't set a deadline yet, so more information, <laughs> but you will see that. So if you want a ton of information on the tournament as it comes out, um, follow that Facebook page, like that Facebook page. We will update you there. He lives for soccer. He loves soccer. He watches soccer. So don't believe him. He's a good soccer player. So you told me you had a ball last summer doing this. It was a lot of fun. And I was nervous because I haven't played in a while. So I first game, I had all the jitters. And we ended up just every week just really looking forward to it, meeting a lot of people I wouldn't have met otherwise, you know, making new friends. That was really cool. And there were food trucks some weekends. We're going to try to do that again this year. So, yeah, I had I had I was surprised how much fun I had last year. All right, so hopefully you'll get involved with the Pine Street Powerball Soccer Tournament. Come out and play with Kenny, and if you can't, then just come on out and watch. It's going to be a good time, and if there's food trucks there, you know we'll be in line, right? You got it. The good food trucks. All righty. <laughs> All right, soccer's fun, but so is winning the Pennsylvania Lottery. Get out your tickets now and check your PA midday winning numbers. They are for the pick two, eight two, the pick three, two seven four, the pick four, three eight seven zero, and the pick five, three four seven six three. Good luck. Hope you won. Ron Marchetti is in with trivia treats when we come back. Goodbye, April. Hello, May. Hi, everybody. And welcome to Trivia Treats. The longest game in Major League Baseball history took place on this day. That game was finally called because of darkness after 26 innings. Does anybody remember that one? I don't think so. The Boston Braves and Brooklyn Dodgers played to a 1-1 tie at Braves Field. The game lasted three hours and 50 minutes. Leon Cadore of the Dodgers and Joe Oishker of the Braves both pitched complete games. Remember those names? I don't think so. Oishker faced 90 batters, allowed nine hits, struck out three, and walked four. He not only held Brooklyn it, uh, without a run over the last 21 innings, but he held the Dodgers without a hit over the final nine frames. Kadori of the Dodgers faced 98 hitters, surrendered 15 hits, fanned eight, walked six, and shut out Boston over the last 20 innings. No one kept an accurate pitch count back then. But just imagine, if they only threw 15 pitches an inning, and that is, is bigger as below average, for 26 innings, they would have thrown 390 pitches each. At least, I would be safe to say, they threw over 400 pitches. Mother of God! Both managers should have been ar arrested. If anything like that happened today, the managers would have been handcuffed and removed from the dugout to spend the night in a jail cell. Well, I have not told you yet the game, when it was played. 
It was played on this very day, May 1st, 1920. Also on this day, and speaking of great pitching performances, Bob Feller pitched a no-hitter for the Cleveland Indians to defeat the Yankees 1-0 at Yankee Stadium in 1948. One year later, exactly 70 years ago, that's one year before, yesterday, in 1947, Babe Ruth Day was celebrated at every ballpark in the major leagues. Ruth made an appearance in pregame ceremonies before a Yankee Stadium crowd of 59,000 prior to a 1-0 Yankee loss to the Washington Senators. The festivities were broadcast on radio throughout the world. Ruth's 22-year-old major league career ended in 1935 and included 15 seasons with the Yankees from 1920 through 1934. Now 52, he suffered from throat cancer and spoke to the crowd with a raspy voice. Ruth was even honored in Japan, where fans gathered at stadiums in Tokyo and Osaka. Ruth will die of cancer on August 15, 1948, at the age of 53. Till Friday, be a good sport. Stay loose. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First night, the first annual Don Shaw Memorial Golf Tournament will be held Saturday, July 8th at the Blue Ridge Golf Club in Mountaintop. Registration begins at 12.30 with a 1.30 p.m. shotgun start. Cost is $100 per player and includes green fees, cart, and dinner. Dinner-only guests will be 25. All proceeds benefit the Don J. Shaw Memorial Golf Fund. For more info, just call 570-868-4653. Our next announcement, the West Hazleton Baseball Association will be holding their annual hoagie sale sponsored by Jonathan's Nest Wednesday, May 17th from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hoagies are $5 each and orders must be in by May 12th. Delivery is also available and walk-ins are welcome. For more information or to place your order, just call 570-454-8199. And finally, the Orwigsburg Lions will be holding their annual Chicken Barbecue Memorial Day from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The event is held at the Orwigsburg Veterans Community Memorial Hall. Full dinner cost is $8 and takeout is available. Tickets are available at Healthy Habits Route 61 in Orwigsburg. At tonight's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Walter M. Henry Sr. of Kempton, Memorial services Friday at 1 p.m. at the Zeigels United Church of Christ. No calling hours prior to the service. Arrangements are by the Keller Funeral Home. Victor F. Perrant of Hazleton. Arrangements will be announced by the Firo Funeral Home. Louis D. Lanning III of Cunningham. Arrangements will be announced by the Harmon Funeral Home. And James J. Marsicano of Hazel Township. Funeral is Wednesday at 9 a.m. from the Firo Funeral Home. Friends may call Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Robert Embert of West Hazleton. Robert, if you're watching, give us a call, 570-455-7267, extension 104. Just checking out... Just checking out our brand new app right now on my phone, our new Samson Productions app. You can watch any part of SSP TV News. You could also watch The Girls, The Sam LaSanne Show, Out of Left Field, and so much more. Get it today. It's available starting today. Have a great night. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.